بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم. أنهانا أن هذا لا يعبر إلا بالدليل. نعم. So the person who is who we will call guided is the person who, although he cannot look into evidence himself or cannot recognize that evidence is when presented to him, he is able to recognize the personalities, the Islamic personalities who stand for the truth and who follow evidence. And so when that person gives a ruling, he follows that person, not because he knows the ruling himself, but because he knows that that person, when he makes decisions, he follows what's correct. وهذا أساس المذاهب الفقهية الأربعة الحنفي والمالكي والشافعي والحنبل أن الناس اعتقدوا في أولئك الأئمة أنهم وصلوا من العلم والتقوى والورع بحيث لا يتكلمون إلا ببرهان من الله ورسوله صلى الله عليه وسلم. And that's the issue related to people, to those who are who are followers or students of certain madhahib or certain schools of schools of Islamic law. Is that the reason why they followed those imams is because they saw in them or heard of them what made them feel comfortable that they feared Allah and that they knew the truth and were aware of the truth and therefore would only rule accordingly. So they followed them or they followed their guidance, not because they deemed them infallible, but because they saw that they were people who feared Allah and they saw in them uh, scholarship and taqwa. The last category is the blind follower. And he, yeah, he's blind. He puts his hand out and he follows the first person that he grabs a hold of. He doesn't know the evidences. And he can't make the connection. He doesn't, he doesn't see the connections between the rulings and the evidences. Even if it was explained to him and, and expressed to him, he, he wouldn't understand. And his madhab is the madhab of the one who gives him the verdict. لكن لا يستطع عنه ذلك أنه عليه أن يتحرى. That doesn't mean that he should not be careful in the choices that he makes and the opinions that he follows. يبحث عن العالم الذي اشتهر بالعلم اشتهر بالتقوى هذا يتساوى فيه أصحاب العقول. He still has to look for what he deems to be the most God-fearing, knowledgeable person that's available or accessible to him. So these are the four groups uh, or categories of, of people as it relates to following Islamic. And that's why he mentioned what he mentioned in terms of the person who followed the opinion of a scholar uh, as it relates to the khudah being a nullification and not being uh, in force, and that person he has no way to know otherwise, so he followed the opinion that was given to him. At the same time, every individual should make it, uh, should make it of, 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 of importance to him to try to understand the, the, the legislates of Islam and, and their evidences. Question. Uh, a blind brother he wants to make a proposal. Uh, so he can't see the woman. What is his uh, or what does he do? Does he touch her hands? A questioner asked if a person was blind and proposed to a woman, uh, as he cannot see her, would it be permissible for him, for example, to touch her face or to touch her hands to kind of get a picture in his mind for what she might look like? The Sheikh said no, uh, until he marries her, it is not permissible for him to touch uh, any part of her body. 
And touching her face uh, really won't indicate to him how beautiful she is. It won't accomplish much touching her face. Uh, if he's concerned about her beauty, then perhaps someone that he deems is trustworthy uh, can inform him, I'm assuming from the family, from, from the women of his family. But the woman who is describing her to him should not describe her uh, in, in extreme detail. Wait, sit down. She's not divorced? She's not divorced. She eloped. Okay. She's a Muslim, yes? She's a Muslim. But later on, the brother reverts to this point. But now, where does she stand? Because you know she's not divorced, right? So, now it has happened many years back. But, so, like, what kind of, what is the reverse of Jesus? What is the reverse It's not considered uh, Islamically for two reasons. Number one, because the woman was already married when she married, which is impermissible. And number two, because uh, she married someone that it was that was impermissible to marry, which was a non-Muslim. So even though uh, it's considered Islamically, that's considered adultery. Uh, so even though things may have changed, because it was initiated in the wrong way, then it's considered to still be wrong uh, because of that initial wrong, uh, because of that wrong initiation. Is, is, is she still married to him? Yes, she's still married to him. She's living with him. She never separated from the first husband? No, 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 no. Hey, he, the Sheikh mentioned uh, before the question, he mentioned that the woman is still considered married to her first husband. She never properly separated from her first husband. So even if she's been absent from him uh, for six years, ten years, she's still married to him because a proper Islamic divorce uh, has never happened. And the woman should repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for her actions because again Islamically she would be considered a, an adulteress. So she should go back to her first husband. She has to go back to her first husband. She, she, it's not an issue of going back. She needs to leave the, first, the, the second guy. She's already and technically still married to her first uh, husband. So, so that means there is no marriage at all? No. There's no, yeah, the second guy is not even not considered married to her at all. You're a woman, a woman, a woman requesting a, a hula because she can no longer live with her husband. She no longer live with her husband. She can't bear the man anymore. 
She no longer can't live with her parents or something? Can't live with her husband. Okay, okay, she can't live with her husband anymore. Okay. And he refused. Um, but instead he gave her a lot. Does she have to spend the remaining uh, weeks of the in his house? thereafter divorced her under regular terms, and so now she's in her waiting period. Is it permissible for her to uh, to complete her waiting period elsewhere, or does she have to complete it in the house of her husband? The Sheikh responded by saying that uh, she has to stay in the uh, in her husband's house. She can't leave of her own accord, and he can't kick her out. We'll uh, stop the uh, lesson and the questions temporarily for the break, inshallah. Uh, before we go to the break, please, a quiz, inshallah. Please, the 